Welcome to Mondo and Friends, presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco, and today we have actor, producer, fan favorite, <laughs> Julio Macias. Julio, how are you, brother? I'm chilling, man. Thank you for having me, brother. Man, I'm, I'm super excited to have you. Uh, we had one of your good friends, Jessica Marie Garcia, yeah. on, on the show, and, and uh, I think half of the show was just about him, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this whole show is going to be about her. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so tell me, what's your favorite thing about Jessica? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> I, um, I, I, one of the things that, that I remember talking about was how, you know, your character in, in All My Block was like a, a, a really a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. um, before we even get to that, though, I want to backtrack a little bit, man. Before you were um, in All My Block, um, before you fell in love with, um, you know, what you do, your mm -hmm. craft. Do you remember that that first spark that made you say, you know what, this is what I want to do? Uh, so it goes so far back that there isn't like a moment, right? Yeah. It, it's just kind of always been there, like white noise in the background. And I was I always kind of knew in a way, right? Um, but then there was also like, no, I mean, I... I, I can't do that, right? Somebody else can do that. I can't do that. So for, for the longest time, I wanted to be a zoologist, right? But then I wanted to be a zoologist like Steve Irwin, right? Or or like the crocodile hunter. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll study zoology and then I'll get like a show and then I'll teach people about animals. Right? Yeah. Um, but no, I, so my, uh, my grandfather starting a, a dubbing company in Mexico City and, uh, my dad started to be an architect, but then took over my grandfather's business. So I grew up when my dad was really mobilizing this company to go from like a group of just actors doing, you know, kind of picking up random jobs from studios to like getting deals with yeah, ABC and Warner and things like that to dub, I think, Barney and then Friends and then things like that. So, um, I grew up around actors, just not, well, I mean, obviously they did theater and, and film, but I just knew them as voice actors, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I thought that was really cool. I think that was like my first exposure to all of it, right? Yeah. Also, um, my hesitance to go into acting wasn't so much like, oh, I, I can't do that because someone, someone like me can't do it or because, you know, I'm just a, a civilian, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it was more of a... Um, well, I can't do that in the States, and that's where I would want to do it, mm. right? Um, because there was a whole bunch of other things that I've uh, taken, layers that I've taken off about, you know, kind of, not uh, colonialism, but like uh, self-Mexican racism in a mm. way, right? Where they say that all the good stuff's over there. Anything here is bad. You know, yeah. Telenovelas are bad, but soap operas are okay, right? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, but no, I so I, I, I grew up uh, watching sound engineers, uh, directors, producers, actors all on, on this end. And I saw, oh, there's a whole industry here, right? It's not just what we see on, on the camera. There's a whole process behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, when I finally decided to take the step and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into acting, it was more of a, I'm going to go into this industry. I love this, the idea of creating a world and all of the different, you know, um, elements that go into it. So if, if I, I'm going to shoot for acting because I think that that's where I, where my abilities would be best utilized. Mm -hmm. But if I don't make it there, you know, there's a plethora of jobs that I can land in. Right. Um, so I, that's why I, I say that it's kind of, it was always kind of like in the background. Right. And, and it was, uh. Yeah, until I uh, I stepped into I stepped into it. Uh, I think high school, right? I, I did theater, and it's interesting because theater, when most people talk about it, it was like a safe haven for them, for mm -hmm. like a like a special place where they fit in, right? I felt like I had to break into that group. Yeah, like no, you don't belong here. And I was like, well, I don't belong out there. Where do I belong? Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is you, you grew up in, in Mexico, right? Yeah. And, uh, were you, 
you came to the States when you were in elementary school still uh, or middle eight, school? Eight years old, so elementary. Yeah, yeah. like third grade-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when you're you're in high school now, do you do you feel like you, by that time, do you feel like you've you've adjusted? Yeah. yeah. So I was uh, I was talking to a friend about this, about uh, code switching or what I like to call the adaptability. Just there, there's a... It, there's this weird thing with code switching, right? Where if, if it's if it's this passive aggressive thing that's put on you mm -hmm. to change who you are to better makes to make someone else comfortable, that yeah. But <laughs> me being bilingual and moving around so often, it, it became like a like a superpower for me to adjust and find and where do I fit in? And then you know I would come in here and you know when I came to the states first. My dad said, when you're going to learn learn English, you're going to watch Disney movies. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I speak the way that I speak. It's because of, like I try to emulate the Disney Channel voice, right? And then when I got into school, it was like, oh, I, I, I like skateboarding. I like snowboarding, so I'm going to fit in with that. And at that time, it was what, you know, Blink-182, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I fell into the, um, into the uh, uh, surfer you know draw to it right yeah yeah um and then later on i found out i through experience finding out that 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 weird butting of heads between the mexican-american community and the mexican immigrant right mm -hmm. where there's a there's a little bit of animosity and once you study the history you absolutely understand why but there was a little bit of uh i don't know why i didn't fit in with the mexican-americans right away it wasn't until way later until i was an adult where I understood the animosity, I understood where it was coming from, that I could say, not apologize, but be like, hey, by no means, in no way, am I better than you, right? right. Or, or this idea that, you know, oh, because you grew up here, because you were born here, uh, you're not Mexican, right? Well, I'm so more stuck in between, right? I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not uh, Mexican-American enough to be Mexican American. Yeah. I'm not American enough to be American, and I'm no longer Mexican enough to just be Mexican, <laughs> right? So, uh, thankfully, though, I think I've I've been able to maneuver. Um, but yeah, so uh, I adjusted who I was to to fit into to elementary school, uh, Sun Valley, you know, yep. out there. Uh, and then I I readjusted when I went into middle school to fit into that like Christian school group, right? Um, although. I believe that there's something higher than us, but religion really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So there was always that like rebellious side of that Got in it. that school. And then when I went to Miami for high school, it was like a whole different experience, right? It was like, here, we don't speak Spanish unless we're in ha at the house. Over there, it's like, you don't even need to speak English if you don't right, want to. Right, right, <laughs> right. Um, and that was a whole other different thing yeah. where... Um, over there, it's like this mainly this this Caribbean uh, Latin vibe, mm -hmm. um, and I I started noticing when I would speak Spanish, I would start to kind of sound Cuban, Puerto Rican, and it was <laughs> very strange. And in in my friends, parents also made a lot of Argentinian friends, and so like when I would hang out with them, somehow I started speaking with an Argentinian accent yeah. right? again to try to like it wasn't at any point trying to deny who I was or trying to offend or make fun of anybody that's speaking to me. It, it was just a kid quickly trying to adapt, right? right. Um, and I think I used those skills once I transitioned into acting. It was yeah, like, definitely. oh, okay, I've been doing this my whole life, you know? And I'm still trying to figure out who I am, right? But <laughs> hey, uh, hey, man, we all are. Yeah. All right, it's all uh, good. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's a little bit of that, that journey. Yeah, so at at this point, you decide to to go into we used to call it drama uh, theater in in, mm -hmm. in high school. We called it drama. Was, did you call it drama as well? Mm -hmm. And uh, drama, drama class. So you get out of high school, and at that point, are you thinking, I want to pursue this as as a career? Y yeah, uh, I think my my junior year was when the idea kind of like really set in. I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I want to be an actor. Um, everyone has their own way of expressing their dreams. Um, we talked about this a little bit before where my parents and my family kind of taught me to, 
you know, work hard, keep your head down, don't make any splashes, don't make any waves, mm-hmm. just prove that you can be by doing it, not by saying you can do it, right? Yeah, it's it's a it's a very humble way of, of working. Yeah. yeah. Uh you get stepped on a lot for, for sure. sure. Um but hey, for better or worse, that's that's what was instilled in me and, t- and taught, yeah, right? Yeah, same. Um and when I when I decided that I want to be an actor and I told my parents, they were very supportive. I think my dad had this idea of like, oh, he'll go do that and he'll use those skills to like continue the legacy that his father built, you know, continue the, the company. My sister ended up taking over that uh, that business. Nice. Um, I told them, they said, okay, study as much as you can, right? Uh, and I n- saw a lot of, people friends of mine that were in, in in these classes with me that that oh i'm I'm gonna do this i'm gonna be that i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this, you know um and at that time not anymore looking in retrospect i'm like i wish i had that confidence but at that time it like irked me that they would speak about this as if it was gonna happen or without putting in the work or just saying oh i'm just gonna go to you know graduate high school go to los angeles right yeah i mean that's what i did but <laughs> uh, I'm going to graduate, go to Los Angeles, and it's just going to happen, right? Yep. And I'm like, well, you should train. You should be a trained thespian. You should right. be, a, you know, you should you should be able to recite Shakespeare. You should be able to, you know, perform on a dime, right? Yeah. Uh, and so senior year, I decided, all right, that's what I'm going to do. I applied to the, the colleges that I wanted to go to. UCLA didn't get in. NYU didn't get in. Um, I got into a school in Pittsburgh, uh, went to Pittsburgh, way too cold. Um, <laughs> so I said, all right, uh, what other, what, you know, I'm going to do general education because, uh, you know, uh, school is not necessarily important to me, but I find it super interesting. Uh, math, history, science, these are, these are all subjects that I'm always constantly reading books on. So, you know, it, it wasn't like college wasn't for me. It's just, it didn't seem like the right path for what I was doing yeah. right but a conservatory was so I ended up going to uh circle and square conservatory in uh New York City um and again being immersed in that theater world right um I, I it was another realization of like I I love this isn't this is great training and I will go back to the theater and I love going on stage but this isn't what little kid in front of the tv wanted to do he wanted mm. to create those big worlds right yeah. those 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 jurassic parks those ets right yeah, yeah. like how do i do that uh right so then i switched it over to film school uh and i did you know three years of film school and um and always pushing off auditioning like i always i never wanted to be a kid actor I never wanted to be like a like a young I, I, like all the roles that i wanted to play were 40. Right, yeah. like in a movie, I would watch, and everyone was like, "Oh, I want to be that kid." It's like I want to be that dad, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I said, "Oh, I thought I have all the time in the world." Right, right. In retrospect, I do wish that I would have started. I didn't start auditioning until I was twenty-three. I wish I would have started earlier, not because I wanted those roles, but because it took from twenty-three to twenty-seven to book on my block. Wow. Right. It's it's the practice of, right. of that, you know, it's not necessarily I'm going to audition and then I'm going to get a job and I'm going to be famous and then it's going to be all this stuff. Right. It was the it's the it's the build up. It's building that callus of rejection. Right. That's one of the number one things that we do in, in our industry is just like be numb to rejection and take those punches because that's what it is. You know, you're going to get 300 no's before you get a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that something that you do become numb to or it, does it still sting from time to time it goes in stages right <laughs> like when i was doing com- only commercial work uh i became numb to it really quickly yeah right and then um i started auditioning for tv and then there were certain roles that i really wanted and then i started becoming numb to it uh, now there's like uh not only film roles, but also like limited series. Right. You're just like, 
oh, right. So now I feel like I'm in that next stage where I need to build up that callus again of just because you didn't get this movie or that project doesn't mean that it's never going to happen to you. You just right. got to, you know, build it up again. So it comes and goes. You know, I, I, I don't remember the, the gentleman's name, um, but he he's uh, I believe he's an Asian American actor. Mm -hmm. Um, was in a Spiels, Spielsberg movie as a kid. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember his name, but yeah, he's yeah uh, from Everything Everywhere All at Once right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and he was he was. I heard him talking about how uh, it took him many, 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 many years um, before booking another role. He stepped back from acting, came back, and uh, once he decided to do that, like, and and fully um just 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 be in in it and 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 commit to to acting again he got his another big break yeah. you know um and now he's like winning awards and stuff like <laughs> that which is crazy man so yeah like go, going back to what you're saying that you know just because you're not booking you know one two three auditions right later yeah. it doesn't mean you're not going to get the fourth or, or the fifth right yeah um yeah it's a numbers game sort it's, of it's 100 percent right? a numbers game and there's so much that doesn't have to do with your ability or your talent right there's so much right um deciding factors between what the writer wants what the director wants what uh the producers and the studios want um you know this <laughs> I, I like what james cameron is doing and i know there's a lot of actors that are hesitant towards motion capture but i like that world because then um physical appearance even falls even further back than what it is right now right yeah it used to matter a whole lot and then it mattered a little bit less and matters a little bit less and it it still matters in a certain sense now, but it's much less than before. I feel like that's going to be the next step of like almost relevant. It never will be irrelevant, but yeah. almost irrelevant. Right? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think uh, we're going to see more of that too, man, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, uh, with VR and, and AI, just like everything, the way it's going, I, th I think we're going to see more of, you have to embrace the technology, man. I, I think because, and there's there's actors that through through um, through AI um, are becoming younger again. And I know like Will Smith did a movie like that. Yeah. There's a few people that have done um, like big actors who who are now playing younger versions of themselves, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is which is crazy. So yeah, I mean I'm 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 sure as a creative like you're totally about that. But so right now I'm doing a video game, and it's the first video game that I've ever done. And at first there was a little bit of an apprehension just cause I'd never done it, but I was like, no, this is, this is great training for where the world is going. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, in, you're in Tony Hawk pro skater 30, <laughs> 34. Man, I wish, I wish, <laughs> man. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but there's, there's this cool idea. Um, once they were taking reference pictures and we haven't started doing any acting yet. So I, we haven't worked in, 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 in the, in the room, I guess. Um, but there's a lot of things that come to mind when they're like, Oh, we can like change this, make this ad adapt this, you know, fix this look or, or, you know, alter this, this, this view or whatever. Um, and then I thought, man, I'm going to, I'm going to give performances in a virtual world uh, that then other people are going to be able to control an avatar version of me in that world. Yeah. But the move to the left or move to the right, they control that, but the action, they're going to record those actions. And it's my expression of Julio looks different moving to the left than he does moving to the right. Yeah. Um, and that's crazy. That's, that's a different, that's a, that's a whole fourth dimension level of performance, right? Yeah. Well, first you had the stage and it's just the actor up there and then you had film and then it's the film is capturing the actor in different, you know, places. And, and now it's someone else kind of controlling you, but you're still there. Your soul is still there. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's trippy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds, uh, intense, man. It sounds yeah. like in like other world type of stuff, you Yo, know, like I'm, next, yeah, there's obviously like an incredibly dark side to that, but animation. Have you done that, or you would you be interested in animation? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd be super down. I love voice. Again, growing up around voice actors, it 
the idea of just throwing your voice and doing all of these different, you know, things, uh, that's super, super. You have super. any impressions? Any good ones? <laughs> I do a mean Mickey. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! That's it. That's all I got. What? <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hold your applause. <laughs> Thanks for holding your applause, man. I appreciate that. Dig it, dig it. Um, listen, man, uh, we had Jessica Marie uh, as, as we were talking about, and uh, she was just talking about how um, deep you got into your character, uh, and there was so much depth to your character. Um, I heard that initially they were only going to have you in maybe three episodes or so, and then... yeah. How do you go from only being being written in a show, three episodes, and then becoming a fan favorite? How does how does that happen, dude? Um, so I don't know if it was specifically like three episodes and it was written more into the first season. I know that it was the character definitely developed after the first season substantially. Um, and the conversation that I had with the creators was just, we have something in our minds right um but then the performer the actor brings something that says oh we this toolbox is much bigger than we thought let's utilize it yeah. right um and i guess that i don't, I don't like patting myself in the back but yeah man do <laughs> it do it yeah it's uh uh yeah it's uh Preparation meets opportunity with a little bit of luck, right? Um, I that world was something that I was exposed to adjacently. You know, I di I didn't live in in the barrio, if you will, right? Yeah. So so for before you yeah. even go into that, um, for those that don't know, on my block, you were on on the show on my block. Yeah. Um, and and tell me about your your character and and yeah and uh, hey, what what you played. <laughs> Um, in, in that. So, uh, you know, Oscar is the, um, the leader of this, uh, protective group, this gang. Yeah. Cool, um, in this fictional town called Free Ridge. And, uh, the way that I looked at him is he was a, uh, a product of his surroundings. Mm -hmm. Right. And more than like necessarily, um, a Scarface type person that had this ambition and just was, I don't know, it's hard to say, but like definitely not morally rot where it was, you know, this was an evil person, right? No, this, this is mm -hmm. someone that's adapting to the situations that, that he, you know, is surrounded with and by. Um, and, you know, growing up in Mexico City, uh, you're exposed to a lot, but also blind to it. You know, I'm, I'm reading a book right now uh, that's talking about how in, 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 in Mexico, we don't, we don't talk about racism. Oh, we're not racist, we're classists. It's like, well, the classes have a very particular skin tone, right? Right, and colorism. You know, colorism, yeah. And, and, and it's, not, it's not talked about because we're all mestizos. Well, that's a yes, yes and no, because it's a, it's a mythology that we've uh, created to make ourselves feel better, yeah. right? Um, and uh, racistas los americanos like that you know Ku Klux Klan that's racist well no this is different this is it's yeah. like well yes and no right um, and then when we moved to the states uh, you know my, my family kind of my dad's business doing starting to do well and gonna you know, kind of moving into middle class and uh, Sun Valley is essentially horse country right but it's also it's also has kind of its little you know pockets areas and so I, I I grew up going to the park and seeing these cookouts and this culture that is so similar to mine, but also different, right? Yeah. And I found it so interesting and I couldn't understand why my mom wouldn't let me just go over there, right? Like we would go to the park and, uh, well, a bit of a disclaimer, we moved to the States because... Uh, uh, we got held up uh, at gunpoint in in a car. My dad was taken for I don't know an hour or two because wow. uh, of the the kill switch. There was like a little thing that he needed to do that he didn't do, so they came back and, and got him. So when we moved to the states, it was my mom was like in super super protective mode, right? Um, so the things that she was exposing me to, uh, and this is something that we talk about now, and she's like, I 
I, I don't regret it because I was protecting you, but there are things that I should have let you be exposed to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and let you grow and let you learn and let you, you know, but at the time it was mama bear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, so I always, they were always around and I always saw it and I always found it super interesting and, you know, um, and I always found the car is beautiful, right? Like yeah. just, um, but I didn't know the, the reason for it, right? Yeah. I didn't understand, you know, the, the big shorts or, you know, the shoes or everyone shaving their heads. I like, there was an aesthetic that I thought was so cool and interesting, but I, I didn't know anything about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I booked this show um i started doing a lot of research and and talking to anybody that would talk to me about that and uh you know i had enough friends in bull heights to kind of go over there and, and talk yeah. and, and 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 then i started you know it was like i i'm not gonna do a caricature i'm not just gonna watch you know um i mean these great movies but like i'm not just gonna watch blood in blood out and just copy that yep. right um i'm gonna try to figure out how this culture got here right mm -hmm. there has to be a history right um and so i started reading and i started researching you know what was you know what happened with the zoot Zoo riots what right. happened before then with uh you know the, the the trains that sent people that were already here back to mexico right yeah. uh and how these protective groups started to form right outside of what you would consider the law or, or this, this, these established, um, you know, groups that yeah. were set to protect, but they were protecting a certain type of lifestyle and not others. Right. Um, then like most things like politics, like anything it, it can become, and it did become corrupted. Right. Um, and, but at the same time, it was like a means to an end, you know, I had to, they had to, not everybody, but certain people, that were protective said, all right, I can't make the money that I need to make to protect my neighborhood this way. So I'm going to do it this other way. Mm. Right. And that's kind of what I tried to bring in to Oscar to, you know, he was sometimes his ambitions got the better of him, but for the most part, he was doing all of this, all of it, right. To protect his brother. Right. All of it, all of it, all of it. And I always came back to that. It's just like, what is the reason for this protection, right? Protection for your, for the brother. And, um, and yeah, I learned a lot from, from these communities and, 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 um, and I try to hold respect to them. And I, you know, I, I can't justify a, a violent crime, but I can try to understand the circumstances that lead people to live in that life. Um, and yeah, I, I hesitate to to do another role like that because I felt it was so um, encapsulating and and not not time consuming but like encapsulating. You were invested. I was invested in 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 this right, and I would hate to do something else similar, and then it just becomes a copy of that, and then it's right. like, oh now you're just playing into that trope. Right. And it no longer has the meaning that it did before. Someone that did come from the life and keeps representing it, that's amazing. That's incredible. That's someone saying, hey, this culture exists and it needs to be presented in different lights. Yeah. All shades that it exists in, right? Uh, for me, that I'm like one or maybe two steps removed from it, that I understand it and I was exposed to it and around it growing up, but not in it. Uh, I think this is, uh, my, my, uh, it was my opportunity to explore it, to understand it, uh, hopefully shine it in a brighter light, um, and then let it, let it stay there. Yeah. Right? Jessica was telling me that you were in, in a, in a, in the zone, I guess you can call it like yeah. on set. And, you know, obviously she knows you as, as, as her friend. <laughs> Right. As Julio. Yeah. And uh, she would look over to you and she would see that that you were like in it. Right. You were you were Oscar mode. You were invested. And she was like, oh, I'm going to let him be right now. <laughs> you know. So. So, yeah, like you you would. I mean, what would you call your style of, of, of acting, I guess? Uh, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as saying, you know, the the infamous method, right? Yeah. Um because there's something incredibly uh dangerous and toxic about it. I I feel I think. If it's done right and if it's done correctly and and in you know the 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 performer can do everything in their power to avoid being <laughs> then you know use your use whatever, you know, thing you you need to use, right? Um I've heard too many unnecessary stories uh, of actors that even that I even look up to that I was just like, yeah, but but why? <laughs> if you can walk to the bathroom, why are you having the crew pick you up and take you there so that you like I and you see it in the performance and you're like, that's why it's like, yes, but you can keep that concentration and use the legs that, you know, the almighty anything <laughs> gave you to go to the bathroom, my dude. Right, I think. Um, but there is something to be said about staying in that zone, right? Yeah. So did you do do that for yeah. for for Oscar? You were Yeah, for sure. You were you were Oscar on set like Yes, I all I, the time. Yeah, I didn't take him necessarily to the trailers or when you know, uh lunch breaks or before or after well it did spill out into after, <laughs> which is <laughs> dangerous at times. Um, but it was also the, the, the spilling it after was a realization that, um, my appearance right now is a choice, uh, and I'm being treated differently. I got pulled over just incrementally, just it, it, an insane amount of times. You wow. Know? Um, question why I was walking in my neighborhood, you know, people moving out of the way for me walk and me being like a pretty scroggly skater kid like that it was not like no one had ever been scared of me my entire life so to embody that for you know however month however month many months it was it it did uh trigger a lot of things right wow. and, and it was a, a very interesting shift and and i got angry right i got angry that i was just like this is a choice that i'm making but it's also the reality of somebody else right and because it's the reality of somebody else that... Based on how they look. That, yeah, that's how they get treated. And that's right. how they've been treated their whole life. And then someone's like, what's wrong? What's, what's, with the, what's with the attitude? And I was like, because you've been treating them a certain way. They, little, they were little kids, right? Yeah. And I was saying, like, when I, when I was a kid and I would watch, you know, uh, those cookouts in, 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 in my neighborhood, like, I didn't want to necessarily go up and, like, hang out with the adults but there was kids there that grew up in that right and i wanted to go play with those kids but my mom was like yo you no 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 hijo es que no sabes y blah, blah, blah. i was like i don't know what do you mean that i don't know it's looks like they're having a blast over yeah. there right um they got some oldies bumping like yeah, let me go exactly, hang out right <laughs> like mom i'm tired of these miguel please please i gotta <laughs> um uh but on set it like from the moment that i got transported from the dressing room to set that was like my moment to kind of like zone in um and i think everyone gave me my space because i wasn't an asshole right uh because everyone's like oh he's a he's a nice cordial person who who uh respects what we do so let's respect what he's doing right so if they saw me start to pace and i had my mantra and i had like these things that i would repeat to myself to kind of get into the voice into the into the body and everything like that when when people would see that they kind of like disappeared and however people some people took it as like oh he's like super like yeah and, and, and it was but it was more for me to zone in into that yeah right um but i still had to be aware the director's like hey move to your left move to your right i can't be like what <laughs> no, it's like I gotta move to the left and the right. What you say, I say. Yeah, what you say, <laughs> right? Um, uh, another thing that you know people kind of underestimate is like, oh, you were you were so badass and uh, intimidating. Well, I was only as badass or intimidating as my uh, fellow actors allowed me to be. Yeah, right. And that's why I I, I went out of my way to be as friendly and open to my castmates as I possibly could mm. so that they would trust me. So they'd say, oh, I know that if Julio charges at me and grabs me, he's never going to hurt me. Right, right, right. Like, 
I'm safe here. He's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be intense. It's gonna be there, but he's never gonna hurt me. Right. right. And uh and I and I noticed my my friendship with with all of these people whom I speak to to this day. Yeah. Right. Um I earned their trust, which allowed them to uh shift that balance of power on screen, which allowed my character to do what he needed to do. Yeah. So Again, it's. I feel it's always a collaborative effort, you know, between for sure. everybody. For sure, there, there were moments um, that I was that I was scrolling on social media, and I would see you pop up on on my screen because <laughs> you, as as both as your character and as yourself, as Julio, <laughs> would go viral because it was just like this whole thing right like obviously the popularity of uh, on my block was was massive mm -hmm. um and then again going back to your character being a, a fan favorite um there there were there were clips often just going viral of <laughs> you know oscar your character you know doing something you know on uh, off offset or i, I remember there's a clip of you um cooking carne asada yeah I got, right I got, I got tight with the uh with the catering so uh, so for those that haven't seen it, <laughs> describe that that video. <laughs> yeah, it was um, around the time of Sal Salve Salt Bay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it had already been like it already had passed, right? But uh, I had asked the 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 um, the catering company something about like you know we're always getting fish and pork and stuff like that, or fish chicken and pork but i never see any carne as much as like well you know um someone asked to please not as like but we're already meeting meat or something like that blah, blah, blah. anyways one day they're like hey julio mira lo que trajimos güey and they had that and it's like i was like oh but don't burn it oh do you want to do it oh, psh, i can do it you know so i went on the other side and i was kind of like messing around with it and and uh and uh yeah i was like I served a couple of plates, not too many, and it was kind of funny to see people, you know. And then I would emulate every single, you know, cook that I've seen uh, on the streets, both in Mexico <laughs> and here in LA. Yeah, you know? every taquero. ¿Qué necesitas? Órale, salsita, ¿cómo? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué quieres? Sal, sal, más sal, menos sal, ¿qué onda, no? Salsa roja, salsa verde, más tomates, más, sal, este, más cebolla, ¿qué necesitas? Mira, ¿quieres más sal? Sal, sal, sal. Sal, 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 sal. So that was just, it was fun, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and again. But you were dressed in, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in your character's attire and yeah. you had the, the whole, the whole get up, man. Yeah. And so I think that made it extra special. I think. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. There's a, there was a, there was a moment, there was a spike in, in the, and I, I completely understand why. Right. So there's, there's no. Uh, ill will in, in in any way there was a there was a huge uptick um in people who are in the life who really like the character and the minute that they started learning that i wasn't that yeah oh poser that guy you know all, as they should right as they should because they've been burned so many times before right um and i i'm glad that the community as a whole kind of embraced that and and saw that I at no point my my intention was to make fun of this character or or this you know community and it was more of uh, my best attempt to sh to to do the work that was given me yeah um, so so there was there was a, a, a I guess like a no there was a, it, it was more of a I noticed it I don't really like read social media posts but it was more when i would meet people in real life and they would get really excited and then i would start talking and then i would just watch their excitement slowly I'm like oh okay cool yeah can i take a picture with you then it's like yeah can you do the face <laughs> yeah i can do the face right um and it and it was like and and i and i and i i get it because for the longest time because i was exposed to um uh voice actors and all this thing that like I, I i i never thought that i couldn't be an actor my my thing of not being an actor is like oh i couldn't do the united states because i didn't live in the united states right mm -hmm. but it was never because i no one like me is on tv or no one that you know looks like me or is part of my community is on is on screen or is at the level that i would that i would want them to be 
when I started going to schools and um, doing interviews and, and fans would come up to me, especially younger, you know, younger fans, there was this, oh man, I was absolutely smack talking the the power of representation on screen, right? This is something that Jessica knows very, very well. Yeah. I had to learn it. I was like, yeah, do it. Be an actor. Like, Julio, no, we have to show them they can be an actor. He's like, no, show me how to be an actor. I just want to be an actor. He's <laughs> like, well, that's you. That's your story. That's not everyone's, right? Right. So I think for people that um, thought that I was that, found out that I wasn't. Right. It was a little bit of a, oh, man, that sucks, right? And so that's why I, I think I try to live my life um, as uh, as plainly and truthfully as I can yeah. uh, moving forward so that I can be uh, hopefully uh, a blank canvas to my entire Latino community, you know. That, uh, that's, that's so interesting how people were walking up to you <laughs> believing – that you would be this character hoping i think hoping and wishing and like yes finally we got one right or something like that right yeah it, because i mean you know you watch a, a film and i'm not walking up to, to christian someone. bale be like batman <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean you're not batman oh man. yeah you know what never mind can you do the bat <laughs> can you do the batman face can you do the <laughs> batman face yeah yeah like that's not happening the fact that it was it was happening to you. It is it, such a. I I th I, th I take it as as a, I would take it as a compliment. Yeah, because for sure. You humanize this character. You made him mm -hmm. real for people to think that this is this is who this person was. Right. Yeah. I remember um, kind of stepping away from from. Well, I mean, I was gonna say stepping away from humanizing a character, but at the same time, um, one of my uh, our buddies, uh, Frankie Quinones. Yeah, Frankie. Um, he he does a a cholo character, right? Yeah. Cholo fit, um, and uh, he he's so good with with his 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 comedy. And I feel like your character and and his character <laughs> are obviously very different. But he does a, a great job of humanizing his his character too, and yeah. and in his own comedic, funny way. I remember when I first watched, and I told him this many times. When I first watched Cholo Fit, I thought he was a a, <laughs> Legit, a cholo, yeah. and I was like, man, this is this is genius. The fact that you know this guy is now becoming uh, a fitness instructor, right? You know? right, right. And uh, he was going viral and all that, and then yeah, I mean, I found out he he wasn't, and I was like, wow, like. He's, he's really good right yeah. um and i think that's that's there's what they also, get from you there's also a lot of uh truthfulness that you could see that he's 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 soaked up uh in in that community at least right yeah. like so um i mean never say never you don't you don't know the quality of a, of a, a script or the direction that a, a certain director might take you for in. sure but like i would feel comfortable making fun of someone from mexico city I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable making someone fun, fun of someone from Oaxaca, you know, especially like making them seem like like some country hick because I don't I since I wasn't raised in, in a country setting, I, you know, I can make light of something without understanding the struggle behind it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, that's why comedy's hard, bro. Like you got to have some to do comedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh that was also something for me when when there was uh more comical and lighter moments later on in in spooky's thing it, you know i was very careful to play don't play the comedy play the realism of it and let right the circumstances around it be funny but not don't make fun of that because yeah. you're already running on thin ice representing this it up by making fun of it right yeah. yeah um but that was that's that's me frankie though he's great have you seen a stand-up like yeah 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 dude, he's he's a genius yeah <laughs> man, he's great he, he plays a bunch of different characters that yeah he, that he again like makes you know humanizes them on on stage yeah. um and uh yeah i love his show too uh um, oh yeah dude. this fool this fool yeah um it took i gotta tell you i mean again it's this weird like Compe immediate competitiveness as if there's not enough space for all of us right 
I, I remember watching the 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 seeing the the uh, the billboards, and I was like, man, come on. <laughs> and then I watched the first episode. I was like, all right, let me watch the second one. Damn, they got me. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there is space, you know. There, there is. There is, an, especially now with so many different streamers and so many different uh, platforms, right? Mm. Everybody obviously wants to be whatever the equivalent of the Stranger Things time, the 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 version of the Netflix version of prime time slots. Yep. Everyone wants to be there, right? But also now there's so many different outlets where people can find an audience, right? Uh, that I think that now we're living in a great, great time to 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 have multiple this fools, right? Yeah. Multiple whatever it might be, right? Right, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I I often think about um, the years of network television, and you only had you know on that <laughs> dial a certain amount of channels, um, which also I feel like that still pertains to mm -hmm. to Spanish. Uh, television, yeah. you know, you either watch Telemundo or Univision or maybe some, a few, like a handful of, of channels and that's all you have, right? Mm -hmm. Like my parents only watch like five channels, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, but that's what, it, that's what it, that was um, back in the day. It was just network TV. You only lived on like NBC, ABC and so on, right? Mm -hmm. um, now there's just like a massive amount of, of streaming services and production companies doing films and, and, and series, like you said. There, there's still the network shows and there's still, so th there's just more opportunity mm -hmm. for, for that, I feel, which is a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah, and uh, do we want more of... Um our people, sure, but also just a diverse, a di diversification of the um, elites, and I don't mean elites as in uh, cabal, Illuminati, but like uh, the, <laughs> the, the 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 pinnacle of each profession: directing, writing, acting, people in front and behind the camera. Yeah, yeah, of course we want it, um, but I think that sometimes we're too stuck on trying to get to 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 that peak. And we're not looking around and seeing how many mountains are actually out there, right? Right. Yeah. It's like that's the only one. It's like why is that the only one? <laughs> yeah. What's uh, your ideal that dream role of yours? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't have one. I. I. I like the idea of switching it up. So if I do this this time, I want to do something different the next time. Um, and uh i also just just like you know i had the opportunity to do with oscar i want roles that i can um completely fade into right uh to the point where they are uh unrecognizable from myself right mm. uh so character work is something that i really really like um and i hope and i wish that I'd get more and more opportunities of this right uh Someone was talking about like, like, do you want to, do you want to just like voice a monkey? And I'm like, if I get to like put inflictions into the monkey, like, yeah, absolutely. I would like to voice a monkey, right? Like th this, um, this idea of me complete and going back to James Cameron, pushing the envelope with Avatar and things like that, like that, that sounds really interesting to me to, 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 to really, really blend in and disappear into a character. That's, that's for me, it, the pinnacle of, of my career would just to be to have constant opportunities where I get to blend in mm. seamlessly into whatever work I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I feel like you can do that, man. I feel like, I feel like Hopefully, you man. will do that. Yeah. I you know, something I that I, I talk about um, here on the show is that we have uh, guests coming in mm -hmm. and they'll say, man, uh, one of my dreams is to do this. One of my dreams is to do that. And, you know, within within weeks, months, mm -hmm. it happens, right? Like, man, I just want to book a, a, a feature or I want to meet Rihanna or I want to, you know, like that type yeah. of thing. And it happens. So put it on the universe, man. Well, this uh, weird mustache thing that I got going on, um, <laughs> it's it's my uh, manifestation for uh, a very particular role that when it was passed in front of me, I found it. I was like, this is this is awesome. Um and it's been a process, and the process is still ongoing. Um, but uh, 
yeah, I would I would love to play this historical character and and bring light to the significance that he had on uh, not only his time but pop culture all the way till it till now, right? Um, and I don't want to burn myself by saying anything. Else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to burn you either, yeah. man. You know, uh, with with twenty twenty three kicking off, uh, what what do you want to do more of? uh in 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 your career in life in general uh i want to be more present i'm uh i think i'm a very um thoughtful person not in the sense of like oh i am th- yeah. like i think too much I I, yeah. I I i analyze i deconstruct i question and i you know um both historical and civil issues uh i i'm not per se an advocate i don't go out and you know if i'm asked to go out on the streets and you know i i will but i like to go into my study and break it down how did we get here why are we here what can we do yes voting helps um advocating helps you know uh, representation helps but there are deeper systemic things that can be changed right and what are those big things and i just like break them down and da, 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 and then sometimes I, I realize that i'm i'm so fixated on on deconstructing something abstract that i'm not here that i'm not present right um i i got sucked into this idea of castability right um and i thought that uh playing well, after after the success of On My Block, I thought, oh, great. Now people will see me as an actor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, they have, but then it turned into, oh, but then Julio. And then suddenly everything I was, you know, even though the role said um, uh, all open ethnicity, once you got to the set and you're like, no, this was clearly a, a, a Latino man of slightly darker complexion right mm-hmm. uh in this and, and then i was like oh i'm getting already clack, 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 clack. why why is that right and then i'm the the book that i'm reading by the note the he's talking about the how it, that's happening to him in mexico city but how i see the parallels here in the united states and though i still am going to finish reading the book and examine all of this um for me personally getting angry about it and frustrating about it hasn't helped thus this far so let me just do what i do which is acting mm-hmm. and do it as well as i can and you know that way push past that right so 2023 i want to live here today now the present the present so, do you do mindfulness don't i don't how do you take care of your mental health i do uh i do therapy uh once a week i i i talk to somebody i've been doing that for about three years now um i used to i mean still drink but i had like a serious drinking habit <laughs> where it was uh it, it, it was going past the point of drinking with people and it was just me drowning myself right yeah yeah so i had to deconstruct that um and then i started doing therapy because I, I unfortunately i equated and have equated uh mindfulness meditation with my bugs with religion Mm. right and it's it's someone telling you that this is the answer anyone that tells me that this is the answer immediate middle finger for me right (laughs) um but then again when i think about it what am i doing when i'm when i'm smoking because it's not like i don't tend to watch i mean i do but like i don't listen to music or tend to watch movies I, i sit there yeah and i and i hear right and i'm like oh that's i'm i'm meditating in in a way right um so yeah, I, 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 I talk to a therapist about traumas, uh, issues, and have she helps me kind of reframe those things in, in, a, in a positive way, Yeah. right? Uh, and then I also just uh, take my time to sort of... But then again, like it, there, are, there are moments where even though I have... Uh, my conflicts with you know the 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 christian faith and the catholic church in particular um there are moments where i'm like 
Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. And I pray that way because it's how I was taught. Yeah. Even though I'm not... You don't practice it yet. That's daily. what comes out, right? In, yeah. the, in the moment of need, in the moment of desperation, that's how I communicate to whatever it is. Yeah. And then after I do the, the opening ceremony, if you will, then I, then I have the, hey, uh, please don't let this plane go down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please uh you know help this person get better yeah please help me get better right um and then again maybe this is the the inbred uh catholic guilt but i, I rarely ask for things yeah right? um i work for things i work for things really hard but i never like i was talking to annie about this we did a a short together and she's just like manifest 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 it's clearly working for her like yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. But I just, I, I, whenever I do it, I feel like I shouldn't be asking, right? I shouldn't, I shouldn't, like, not that I don't deserve it, but like, I don't know. There's this weird, there's this weird disconnect where I'm like, it's not, it, it's not a, it's not a wish jar. Yeah. It's a, in absolute time of needs, pull the red cord. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I think we're, we're manifesting. It's just about putting things out in, in the universe and, and not necessarily like always asking mm -hmm. it's more so just like hey i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do i'm gonna land this i'm gonna you know you know i'm gonna get my i'm gonna i'm getting a new car this year i'm getting a you know i, I think it's more so just putting it out and as they say into the universe right yeah um and whether that's you just talking to yourself and just saying it out loud mm -hmm. or you sharing it with people i personally don't share much with people yeah i'm a private person in that in that sense but i'll say it like i'll say um, this year i'm doing this this year i'm you know and and you 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 have to just you know it's it's, it's the it's i believe in, in energies right so right. like if 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 you um we, we jokingly talk about how if you say man i i never win anything you know then you're not gonna win anything right right if you're like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna win I'm going to, I'm going to win this mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, the, putting that out, the energy out is, is, um, is powerful. I, I, I attribute part of me getting spooky from me being like, this is mine. Yeah. I read it. I, I saw it and I was like, this is, this is a different representation of this type of character that I've ever seen or read. I'm, I'm going to do this. This is mine. And then it was right. Um, but it's always in, in retrospect that it's like you said in, in, in private. Um, yeah, I, I'll say, wouldn't it be cool to do this or have <laughs> this? Right. And then if it happens, then, then, you know, because I mean, living in Los Angeles, doing what we do, sometimes it's like when you ask somebody and it's, it's in no fault of this, that's how we're, you know, conditioned is like, how are you doing? Oh, well, you know, I really want to do this and this and this project and that project. And, and then I'm going to do this over here. And I know like, so those are all things that you're doing. How are, how are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I wasn't yeah, asking yeah, yeah. you about your projects, you yeah. know? And it's like, it's always this, this need to validate yeah. your existence here by telling people all of the things that you're doing that it's like, that's why it's worth me being in Los Angeles. It's like, Hey bro, it's okay. You could, you can live here. You can be here. It's fine. Yeah. You deserve to be here. You're okay to be here. Um, I, I tend to not talk about all the things that I'm doing with like certain people, obviously I like, I, but in general, I like, Oh, how was your day? Uh, had some dope breakfast. I watched the curse of Oak Island. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Just my daily stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, it's important to, to, like you said, to, to be good with with yourself right and um just be prep being present is such a huge part of that um i do i practice mindfulness from time to time and mm -hmm. and and for me mindfulness is just um grounding myself like just like yourself um thinking i think a lot right like and and i catch myself sometimes i'm still in bed julio and i'm you know, I may still have my eyes closed and I'm, start, I'm starting to think I got to do this. I got to do that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, this week, this is happening. And, and, and I'm like, well, it's just, it's, 
I get overwhelmed quickly. So what I do is, is, is just think about the present. That's for me, that's mindfulness, right? Like think mm -hmm. about the present and, and ground myself. Okay. I'm, Hey, you know what? I'm in bed. All right. Let me, <laughs> what am I feeling? I'm feeling the, the covers over me, the pillow. Okay. It's comfy. You know, do I hear something? Do I hear the birds outside? Okay. So I it just, I just ground myself and I, and, and that helps me with, with anxiety. Mm -hmm. It helps me with, with depression, uh, you know, and, and, and so, you know, I recommend it, man. Yeah, no, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll do more of it. Cause I feel like I, I, I need to. And I also think that my, my, the, I ask so many questions that I definitely acting will always be a, a part of my career, but I think down the road, I will transition into um, producing and bringing the whole project together, right? Because I've noticed, uh, I've been noticing a lot in, in castings uh, where I'll push back, you know, uh, hey, they want you for this. Oh, but uh, I'm not Native American. It's like, I know, but but like you did the the, the 23 and me and it says that you're 34%, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't raised in the culture and, you know, the it's a complicated conversation in Mexico to be mestizo in a, in a mix and I don't know, like I know what tribe I'm from because I researched it, but I don't know anything about that, you know. Right. Or uh, um, this idea of, uh, of playing different sexualities where it's like, Yes, I'm comfortable and cool with it, but I also have enough friends who actually identify as that who are phenomenal actors. Why aren't they getting these opportunities? Like, I don't know. I'm not their agent. I'm your agent. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, but this opportunity has been presented to you, right? And I break all these different things down that um, might be stopping me from reaching that next thing in acting, but I think will be really good for producing. Yeah. All these questions about... Uh, what kind of stories, where do they take place, you know, uh, inclusivity, you know, take ex inclusivity out of it. What are the, who are the best actors for the, for these roles? Who are the best people in, this, in these positions? Um, it's like this giant puzzle that I feel like my mind is really well calibrated for. Now I just need the experience to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like you reverse engineer. Yeah. A lot yeah, of a different lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great, man. I mean, that's you're you're uh, you're creative at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, and and acting is just one of the things that you do. Yeah, it's it's the thing that I'm doing the most at the moment, right? But it's by no means, I think, the the end of it. <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Now, um, for someone that and and and. and I, I would love if you can be honest with, yeah. with me on this, man, because it's it's close to my heart. Um, and and uh, I heard you mentioning that you were at one point in your life struggling with with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, how did you get out of that? How were you able to overcome that that struggle with with alcohol? Yeah. Alcoholism. Um, so I, my process hasn't allowed me to get to the point of calling myself an alcoholic, although a lot of my behavior could be considered that. Yeah. Um, and that was mainly going to a lot of uh, AA meetings and this idea of surrender. I don't like to surrender <laughs> i'll be humble and i will i will collaborate i will never get in your way but this idea of absolute surrender yeah ugh, it's something that i have a, a hard time with right um but what helped me was oh um i just had too many drinks because we were celebrating oh, i just had too many drinks because i was sad I just, you know, I had too many drinks because I was bored. Yeah. It's like, well, no, you know, you're just having too many drinks and it can't be those threes. What, what is it deeper? What is, what are you drowning? What are you, you know, the, there are personal issues, but the, the biggest one is me, uh, feeling like a fraud or feeling like I don't deserve this. Right. Mm -hmm. Or someone else deserves this more than I do. Right. Uh, the position that I'm in, the, the privileges that I have, the, 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 the passes that I've gotten. Right. Like 
man, some, someone else deserves this more than I. So, um, coupled with me being <laughs> at times overly nice and overly, uh, accommodating to people, um, that turned, um, since at that time I wasn't really working out, that would, like, I would, I would be very, very nice to people and accommodating to people, but then I would go home and just black out, uh, because I was, it's like, man, I should have, I should have said something. I shouldn't have backed down. I shouldn't have done this, you know, and, um, it's an ongoing process, right? Because again, uh, I have had amazing, beautiful times with, drinking with my family or with friends yeah. in, a, in a celebratory positive mode right it's when everyone else is done and i want to open that next bottle right then i'm no longer drinking for the purpose that we're all here socializing now it's it's something else and it's something different and um man i've you know i've, I've cracked my skull because i fell off a balcony because I was too drunk, you know, um, I fell through glass because I passed out on a glass table, you know, um, and these were all, they weren't, they weren't cries for help. It, for me, it felt like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hey, you really need to talk. I don't, if I if I wanted to talk, I can talk to you. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be you know drinking this bottle right um, until I realized that I did need to talk. But I didn't need to talk to everybody. Yeah, right. It wasn't. I didn't. I didn't need to. And I don't feel like I need to explain myself to everybody why I you know why I drank as much as I did, right? Um, but I did need to com with in this therapist. I did need to confine and kind of deconstruct and 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 break it down what I was drowning. Yeah. Right. And once I realized what I was drowning or one of the many things that I was drowning, the big one, right. Then I said, Oh, there's no amount of liquid that I can take. That's going to wash that away. Yeah. So let me just deal with it and let me process it. And let me, you know, the, the thing about therapy that people don't understand is they think that it's going to solve your problems, that it's going to make everything go away. It's the opposite in a way. It amplifies all of these things so they're at the forefront. And then just like lifting weights, you become stronger at holding those things. But those things are much more present now. No. And I feel like I'm better at, at handling them and holding them now. Um, and sometimes it does feel easier to just to fuck, I'm just gonna get drunk. I don't want to deal with this. I'm just gonna get drunk, right? Um so that's that's where I'm at. And now I I if I feel like drinking and I'm in a bad mood or sad or I had a bad day, I I will do a million other things so that by the time that I, I can I'm too tired or I just I just don't want to. I'll I'll try to only drink when it's in a celebratory mode and then I'll also cut myself off at this point. Even if I'm yeah. like, I know like I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> I could do more, but that more turns into the most. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. Um, and for me, uh, once I accepted it, cause at first it sucked, you know, it's like at first it's the idea of like, make it go away. Well, I can't make it go away. That's what, that's why I came here for to yeah. you for make it go away it's like i'm gonna help you manage it better but i can't make it go away and i guess that's a type of surrender where i where i understand that it's never gonna go away i have to be better about handling it that i that i understood like um that i just felt more comfortable with it like i got a i got a funky toe um <laughs> Unless I cut it off, that funky toe is gonna stay funky for the you know forever. Uh, and now I don't think about it unless like I somehow have a misstep and I'm like, oh right, that toe. But now I it's like you know it's in the back of my mind. I've learned motor skills to kind of compensate for that funky toe. I feel like I'm learning that uh, with uh, my inner demons. If you yeah, will. yeah. I I appreciate you talking about that and then. Um, you know, in, in my 
family uh when it came to to my uncles and and grandparents um you know alcohol was 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 a big thing right alcoholism was a big thing um you know sobriety homes you know a lot of my uncles were in there some you know it, it worked for them others it didn't um it affected their lives deeply right and um you know there's there's family members now that that I want to help that that are struggling with that and and I don't think that gets talked about enough you know I think um you know we talk about drug addiction we talk about we're talking about mental health a lot right mm -hmm. which is beautiful I think you know struggling with like we talk about substance abuse but but alcohol not as much you know in in, in specific if it's uh, legal and accepted right right but, but it's 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 very um it's very heavy uh for the individual that that is is going through it you know and um it's very heavy for the families and and, and the friends that that have someone in, in their lives a special loved one um you know i have a loved one mm -hmm. that 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 uh, is is really close to me and and i just don't know how to help them mm -hmm. right um what would you how 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 can i possibly go about it you think to to make that connection like you said you know yeah hey you can talk to me about it i don't want to you know no i'm good I'm yeah good. i don't want to talk like I, I i get that often but like is there is there a way you think that that can possibly i can open open that door open that window uh to help them yeah it's it's a slippery slope um don't take away the bottle like just don't because then then you become the bad guy um i had a i had a really good friend who uh, who passed but there was a there was a moment it was 19 maybe um just uh it was the beginning of an escalation for for drinking and uh friends didn't want to drink with me anymore because they just dude you just you never end bro <laughs> you're a fish um and uh and i was like one weekend i was just trying to ask for a bunch of people like to come out and do that and i finally just yell nima can i just come through and he's like yeah yeah come over and like we're smoking and we're just talking this and that and i'm walking around and he's like and this was at the time where I, I, there was a not an intervention but it was like a like beer pong tournament like yo dude you took it too far like you really gotta cool it down like my cousin stopped talking to me he's like Un unless you're like sober i don't want to talk to you and he did something that was counterintuitive, and I don't know if this would help for your family member, but for me, it was, I don't know, it, it felt different. And, and even though I didn't, I'm 30, I'm about to turn 33, and I, even though I didn't address those issues until now, this moment kind of sticks in my mind, and that's why I miss this guy so much, because I wish he was here. But um, he went, and he's like, he cracked the beer. And he handed it to me. He's like, hey, you want a beer, man? And I was like, yeah. And when I tell you that I I sipped the beer, like I usually it's like, oh, beer, right? I sipped it. And I just sat there and I talked to him and it, and it was this acceptance of like, hey, I'm not, I'm not your keeper. Yeah. I'm your friend. And I'm here for you. And if this is what you need right now, I'd rather you do it with me here than, you know, you go and get a, uh, you know, a handle of vodka and just pour it down, <laughs> right? Um, which I've done. Um, yeah, so I, that that helped me at that moment, and it was this this idea of, okay, all right, you're 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 willing to compromise. You don't want me to hurt myself. You don't want me to drown. But you understand, but you want me around. Yeah. You want me here. Right? You invited me to your home when everyone else is like, don't come to my house unless you're sober. And while I'm here, you're allowing me to 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 
be who I was at that time, right? Um, that was an, that was that was a uh, the the first crack in the book, if if you will. And again, that was ten years ago. So maybe something that you do now will help him way down the road. Yeah, you gotta trust that, right? That it's not gonna happen tomorrow. There's yeah. nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Unfortunately, it's gonna help someone change their life by tomorrow. Cracking my head open didn't help me change my life by the more. Um, now, remembering the times that I had to carry, you know, family members um, up the stairs because, you know, of the guacariados and just like, you know, hammered. But it's, hey, it was, it was Sunday, <laughs> right? It was Sunday. Um, and now that I'm, you know, building my own family, I, you know, I don't want them to have to do that with me. Yeah. So that's another reason. But that's something that I decided. I had to pick that. I had to be the one that said, I don't want that. Right. Because all the times that everybody else told me that, hey, you got to stop that. For me, it never helped. Yeah. Um, But it's tough. So just be patient and be there, you know, in however, whichever way, you know, and it's difficult because it's like, oh, so you're, you know, other people will be like, so you'll you'll tie the noose for them if they're saying that they're going to hang themselves? I don't know, but I'll stand there and talk to them as long as they need me to talk to them. And hopefully that's enough for them to push that another day. Yeah. 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 I mean, for, for, for my family member, um, he gets depressed mm. and, and depression... Uh, takes him to, to, to alcohol, yeah. you know, and, and, and my, my parents, um, or, you know, my family, they, um, they tell me, right. Like, Hey, um, what, what, what can we do? And it's like, yeah, I can't, we can't do any, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can talk to, I can talk. And, and like you said, I, I mean, I sort of do the whole, like giving, you know, this person the bottle, um, and then, in conversational in a conversational way, you mm-hmm. know, I'm like, Hey, like I'm not, cause, um, I think that's the most, the toughest thing is, is, um, I'm assuming aside from like the, the, the depressive state that one may be in and mm-hmm. that causes them to, to drink is, is they also feel like they're the problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you become the burden to everybody else. Right. And then you're like, then I'm just, <sighs> There, there were times when I would be walking to and from a bar, um, and I would see just someone chilling on the street, you know, obviously either with mental health issues or homeless, and I was like, hmm, I wouldn't be bothering anybody. I could keep doing what I need, what I want to do, and I wouldn't be bothering every anybody. You know, and you have these, th- like for me, I have, I think I have more anxiety than depression. So like my, my drinking manifests itself in different ways. Right. Um, thankfully I've never had like, you know, dark thoughts of like ending anything, but disappearing. I've had that, like, I'm going to go live my life. However the fuck I want to live it yeah. away from anybody else. That's that I'm going to inconvenience. Right. Um, so just don't push that hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, th- yeah. I think, I think that's the worst that, that, that you can do is just, is, is, is push, you know, just sort of like walk with them. Right. It's yeah. just more so the, uh, the key maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, 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 yeah, the, the idea the, the, the walking along, you know, um, thankfully I've had, uh, friends who have, who have done that with me. It's like, Oh, you need to. All right. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going to stop you from doing it, but I'm not going nowhere. Right. Yeah. And then like, and, and that for me, there was moments where I was like, okay, for you, bro, for you, I'll, I'll, I'll try something different. Right. Or, you know, for my wife, like, you know, I gotta, I gotta try something different. Right. Yeah. You, you, you've been through it, you, but you, and you, and you're here. Right? Yeah. She's a little heavier handed, right? <laughs> like, but, uh, but, but yeah, at the same time, you know, it's, it, 
the 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 spark had to come from from me and at least for me it, it would have never worked otherwise i don't smoke don't drink i've never oh never saying? have i'm not showing off i'm just saying that this is, i've always i was always judged oh. for not drinking hey i was in you know I, so i come from like the the entertainment like djing right, 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 right hosting like the club scene like all that and they look at me like wait you don't drink like what is, you're weird right like yeah so i dealt with that which is that's the other side of the coin i guess um eventually people were just like here here's a water bottle here's a, a red bull yeah. or whatever you know uh is <laughs> sprite is my drink of choice as yeah. so I, I i met chewy when i was doing um music videos and directing them or producing them and stuff like that and that was like i would every time like, chewy here's a breeze like i'm not drinking tonight what i'm not i'm not and i've only drank with chewy in the seven eight years that i've known him twice and it's always like a drink yeah, yeah, right yeah. <laughs> so i was like i don't know I, I always found that interesting like someone who like you said is so immersed in something that you would consider a 24 7 party yeah done party that way yeah right man i i appreciate you talking about that i i really really do and you know um definitely one of the most um powerful conversations that we've had you know on the show and 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 i thank you for that seriously yeah man. <laughs> um now uh shifting gears here <laughs> <laughs> um we uh do something called um rapid fire with julio macias Dale. favorite spanish word it's supposed to be fra ra 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 uh, fire. i mean first thing that pops up the first thing that popped in was parangaricutirimicoro, but that's a tongue twister. <laughs> Parangaricutirimicoro. <laughs> yeah, it's a word. Eh, guajolote. Guajolote. Yeah. Parangaricutirimicoro. That is, is that like a, 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 a I think city? It's a, I think it's a tongue twister. Is, is it just a tongue twister? I, I thought it was also a town somewhere. Yeah. Man, I don't know. We got we got to Google that later. <laughs> Parangaricutirimicuaro. There's a song about it, too. <laughs> See, I, I can say it because I remember the song. Uh, it was Parangaricutirimicuaro. Parangari. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking of music, speaking of music, salsa or merengue? Salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Latino food dish? Uh, tacos al pastor. Mm. Best song to play at a party? Ooh. Um, probably not, but I'm really into Cien Años right now. Best singer of all time? Best singer, Andrea Bocelli? You bump Andrea Bocelli? No, but I'm just trying to do <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you, you're, you drove over here yeah. like, oh. oh. Wow, this guy gets down. <laughs> uh, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? <laughs> nene, nene. Nene, nene. Nene, nene. Who calls you Nene Nene? Uh, my, so I, I referred to myself as that when I was a kid. So like for a long time, like, hey, Oye Nene, Oye Nene Nene. nene, nene, nene. <laughs> nice. Parangaricutirimicuaro. Uh, Would have been a better a better name, I think. Right? Um, try saying it, Fred. <laughs> Fred just said para para la otra vez la otra vez well Julio I appreciate you thank you yeah. nene nene for coming by <laughs> uh, Mondo and Friends uh, and thank you as well for listening to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon <laughs>